Where have you been? I thought you were just getting milk. Stockbridge. my most honorable of peeps. Welcome to the next part of our neighborhood guides. This time it's one that you asked for a lot and that is Stockbridge. You can probably already tell if you've ever come to Instagram and looked at pictures of Edinburgh. This, the Circus Lane, is one of the quintessential Instagram pictures of the city. This is one of the places I'm going to be taking you but uh, my main focus is going to be on telling you what our favorites are because honestly there's just so much to do, so much to see and mostly so much to eat here in Stockbridge. So why why don't you join us for a journey through Stockbridge filled with coffee and cake and drinks and delicious food and also to meet with my friend who actually lives here so you know that this is not just my tip at some sort of scum from Haymarket but also <laughs> some tips from an actual Stockbridge local. Alrighty, let's go! There are many ways of approaching Stockbridge. I think one of the nicest ones is arriving through Dean Bridge, as the views are truly impressive, but for this video we shall be coming in from Circus Place. At the top of Stockbridge area, the Pantry is a very popular cafe for brunches and lunches, although they have once served me a roast carrot as a vegan hot dog and honestly, I have still not fully gotten over that. I always thought Stockbridge was called that because of livestock. Turns out in Old Scots the name meant timber or log bridge. It has kept its independent village status until 19th century, where it's finally become an official part of Edinburgh. On the same side of the street, hiding around the corner, is Edinburgh's most photogenic street, the ever so picturesque Circus Lane. Come here early in the day or later in the evening to get a chance for an uninterrupted photo shoot. The locals seem to be pretty used to it and okay with visitors taking pretty snaps, but do try to keep in mind that this is a residential area. One of my favorite offshoot streets here in Stockbridge is St. Stephen Street. It has it all – cafes, posh restaurants, bookshops, vintage clothing and even a vinyl store. It's also a location of one of my favorite cocktail bars here in Edinburgh, the Last Ward Saloon, which falls under the same umbrella as the ever-so-famous Bramble and also Lucky Liquor. Both of those also way up on my favorite list when it comes to drinks. Also on St. Stephen Street, Bell's Diner is a true local institution. This place has been selling burgers since 1972. Road, you'll notice Gelato, a newish gelato spot which also has an outlet at the top of St. James Quarter. They were closed literally every time we walked past, so we'll need to feature them in one of our future videos, I guess. One corner further, Nook's Kitchen, a popular local Thai eatery. It's located in this wonderful old building and on a cold day it becomes the best alternative to warming Scottish cuisine.
Now, this is an obvious one, the Stockbridge Farmer's Market. For many, this is their favorite weekend market across the whole city, and you can really tell by seeing my footage, because this was early in the day, kind of close after they opened, and the place was already heaving with people. I love picking up jams for my Christmas baking here, and of course a treat or two. This time we went for a cuckoo, which is kind of like a vegan frittata. Across the bridge, let's just quickly pop into Hamilton Place, now famous for being the home of Lennon Bakery. Yes, the one where people willingly stand in a queue for 40 minutes to get their paws on a croissant. If you don't feel like queuing though, then first of all, you're never gonna get that British citizenship. Second, why not try Fortitude Coffee? the bridge, you'll notice the entry into the Water of Leith walkway. You can either connect to the path here to walk towards Leith, or turn around and walk towards the most Dungeons and Dragonesque bridge in Edinburgh, St. Bernard's Bridge. This whole area is absolutely stunning to me, and my friends, the amount of ideas for fantasy cosplay photo shoots this place is giving me is out of control. also notice that on the other side of the river there is another park. These are the private gardens accessible to Stockbridge locals only. If you do choose to move into this neighborhood, then you might just be buying yourself the access to one of Edinburgh's most stunning green places. Now back to the Stockbridge High Street, because these charity shops are not gonna visit themselves. On one of my shoot days, I decided to stop by Soderberg, a part of Edinburgh's own network of Swedish cafes. The cardamom bun really hit the spot, but there are many other less obvious Swedish treats available here too. Around the bend, let's pop into yet another stunning bookshop. This is Rare Birds, the only bookshop in Scotland dedicated purely to female writers. video might or might not have been planned purely around my need to have a justifiable reason to visit Pastry Section, Edinburgh's most wonderful cake shop. This is a place where you'll always find something new and exciting, and I'd say it caters to continental tastes very well. If you're more of a cream cheese frosting or chocolatey whipped cream person rather than a classic British buttercream person, buy yourself at least three treats for a proper taste test. I also always loved visiting Caoba, a store full of handmade Mexican gifts and a selection of Mexican cooking ingredients. This place really is a little treasure trove, and I always leave with at least one little trinket I definitely did not need, but it was just calling to me. But if you're after little souvenirs, Independent Zebras got your back. You'll find so much indie Scottish design here to bring home with you. point, you have surely noticed that this place is a heaven for charity shop hunters. You will even find multiple of them that are dedicated to just books. Mm -hmm. 
Almost at the end of the high street, you'll find a branch of 12 triangles. Their window is really speaking for itself. These are award-winning pastries, my friends. Simon and I really like the croissant loaf, which is like bread pudding made with croissants. Croissants in custard. Some days are just so bad, only a croissant loaf will help. Now, let's take you around the corner where you can find two little hidden gems. George Muse, a local cheesemonger, where you can try before you buy and have a lovely conversation with the staff about your cheese preferences. And next to it, Mr. Eon, a little local coffee roastery, where you can pick up some beans or perhaps some tea to take home. Now the last bit of Stockbridge that I'm gonna cover in this video is this newly built block with a supermarket, gardening shop and a lovely coffee shop you might remember from our recent newly opened video, Two Children. This place is much larger on the inside than it seems, making it probably the largest capacity independent coffee shop in the whole area. And now let's meet our local friend! Okay, so once again, I am here to brag about having friends. This time it is Christine, my local Stockbridge friend. Uh, very jealous of your Stockbridge postcode. Uh, that's a very elite postcode in the city. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna start by asking you what you think are both the best and the worst things about life here in Stockbridge. Yeah, so best things probably one of them is this park here, this Dean Gardens that you get access to when you live in the in Stockbridge area, a few postcodes. So we come here on a regular basis, walk our dog. So that is a very nice place to come to. There are really nice shops around as well. So me being Swiss, love cheese. There is a very nice cheese shop and there's several delis as well. And there's a nice fishmonger and there's a very nice butcher. And of course, there's plenty of nice restaurants, but there is also a very nice shop selling uh, independent artwork from, mm -hmm. from local artists called an independent zebra that I go to often as well. So that is amazing. Now, uh, do you have any hot stakes on uh, why people might not want to move here? What are the downsides of being a local here? Yeah, well, it can be quite an expensive area to live in. It can be also very busy sometimes when you live close to the high street, especially during fringe, but also now mm. because there's now tourist buses who drop off tourists to go for local walking tours, which is nice. Okay. But um, it can be depending on where you live that there are going to be people standing outside your house having conversations. Um, yeah, sometimes <laughs> during the night as well. But um, apart from that, it's, it's very nice. It's very green and mm. we still have never regretted moving here. It does feel quite busy, especially during the day and during weekends. A, what mm -hmm. would be, uh, according to you as a local, the best time to visit if you want to avoid as many people as possible? I would say probably like beginning of the week and also, yeah, more in the morning time. Mm -hmm. And um, then you can, for example, also go and have a nice brunch at, at the pantry, for example. Yeah. And then you, you can also calmly and quietly browse in the charity shops because yeah. that is also... There's so many of them here. Yes, yeah. <laughs> like Every few meters there is a charity shop. So yeah. if that's something you're looking for and interested in, that is a really good place. What would you say is the sort of demographics on average in Stockbridge? I would say it's... There are a few families, but it's. I think it's mainly... Yeah, I don't know, people in their 40s, 50s, mm -hmm. up to elderly. There's many people who have lived in the area for their whole life, so like mm -hmm. 30, 40 years that own property here as well. But there are also families, because there's also at least two local schools that I know of. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's definitely a family-friendly area as well. Mm -hmm. So and Many dogs. Many dogs, yes, yes. <laughs> because many green spaces. So you have Dean Gardens, then you have St. Bernard's Well just across the river. Mm -hmm. And then you have the botanics as well. You have Inverleaf Park. So that alone is, is, is good for people who want to have mm -hmm. a dog. So uh, we're sitting here in this beautiful sort of private garden, but there is actually a way that uh, you can 
<laughs> you can bring people here through something that you do. Can you yes. tell us more about that? Yes, absolutely. So uh, in my spare time, so once a month it is at the moment, I run mental health walks. And uh, there is an organization, they're based in, in England and they're called Mental Health Mates. Mm -hmm. And um, so you can, you can sign up, you, become, you can become a walk leader, you can do their free training. Mm -hmm. And it's a really good thing of, yeah, it's, it's a really good way of bringing people together. And I usually do it once a month. So we meet outside the, the gardens here and then we go for a walk and it depends on the physical abilities mm -hmm. of the people as well and how fast we go and depends on the weather, but it usually takes around an hour mm -hmm. and you can just come here and just walk and talk mm. without fear of judgment. Yeah, That's a very uh, important thing. That's amazing. I wish yes. more people did that. And also I think that in Stockbridge, this is probably one of the quietest areas. Yes. Because <laughs> uh, today it's, it's Sunday and the markets are on and uh, it's, it's getting quite wild on the, on the high street. Yeah, but here it's always nice and quiet, mm. even if there's people going and having their foods mm. like across the river, mm. you don't hear anything here. So mm. it's, it's very nice and relaxing and it feels private as well. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I hope this has been a useful insight to all of you. You don't have to trust me, just someone who lives in filthy Haymarket. You actually have someone who lives in this beautiful postcode area of Stockbridge, giving you all of her secrets. <laughs> thank you. You're very welcome. And that serene piece of b-roll took us straight to the end of this video. And let me say, I always knew that Stockbridge is a great place to visit when you're in Edinburgh. But I do have to say that uh, being forced by this video to come here basically every single day from like Monday to Sunday really made me appreciate it like a lot more than I used to. Uh, I think mostly because I figured out that when you come between perhaps like 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. on a work day, that's like the sweet spot when really it is much less busy than usual. Uh, it was so much more enjoyable around that time. So that would be my pro tip for when to visit Stockbridge. It really did feel like quite a huge challenge to take on, you know, visiting all of these places. And I still have such a sense of we missed out on so many great spots that are worth visiting when you're in this area. So if you do have any tips, if you do have any Stockbridge favorites, which we haven't mentioned in this video, please let us know and let the other people know in the comment section. Also, traditionally, if you have a strong preference for which neighborhood we should visit next time and guide you through, then also let us know in the comment section because uh, we do take your tips very seriously and we do get inspired often. And also any other video ideas. Not that I'm out, but... Uh, I appreciate them. Okay, so if you do want to follow me elsewhere, not just here on YouTube, don't forget to visit me on Instagram, Kakibot for my illustrations, Kaki blog for my life in Edinburgh mostly, and other travels, some travels coming up soon. Okay, uh, that is it for me. Hopefully you had a great time visiting Slowbridge with me and I shall see you soon. By the way, this is Simon's hat. Uh, he told me my forehead was too shiny and just aggressively forced his hat onto me.